Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com The mob mentality The mob mentality is back, Jabes Back in a big way this week Holy shit You lost your fave You lost one of your favorite podcasts yeah, my gosh. That this was strange. I mean, that this was so for the audience at home who, you know, look, we've talked about this numerous times that Jabes can only sleep to murder. Yeah. That it's is the, the only, only thing, thing. And podcast is your jam. Relaxes me, sure. I, I've said this, you know, privately to you a bunch of times, but like I, you're one of the major reasons we got in a podcast because you've loved it for years. You, you were a day one homie, like old school. You were the first person I, you were the cool kid. You're sure. the first person I knew that knew about podcasts. Right. And knew about them. I mean, as a crazy, just the people that got into advertising on podcasts back in the day when right. I started listening, I thought these are the smartest people. And I wasn't. I, and everyone's like, Sh- I mean, okay, I, wasn't, I just podcast. wasn't sold. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sold because it, it still seems like, oh, you have a podcast in your garage. Because the people that I had seen doing it at the time were Mark Marin, who right. literally has a podcast in his garage. In his garage. And, um, and Joe well, Rogan. Yeah. Joe Rogan. If you watch the early Joe Rogan videos, it looks like he's recording in his closet and he's being held captive somewhere it's like that saturday night live skit where like jimmy fallon has like a show in his room yeah yeah yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. <laughs> and that's like what other picture. people come yeah. in and you're like hey and they stand behind him and you both are looking at anyway so you've seen it we, yeah w- with that it is it, it took me a while sure. to come around to the fact that podcasts are really truly replacing terrestrial radio like yes. that is happening every single day Spotify is trying to buy up everybody and their mother to complete that. I mean, I look, I looked at the numbers, by the way, for Spotify. And I mean, they're, they're staggering, to say the least. You know that 21% now of all Spotify listeners are, are listening to just podcasts only? And that number is expected to double within three to five years. Mm. That's how many people are truly listening to podcasts on a daily basis that right. if you're going to tell me in three to five years, it's going to be 50, 50 with music. Shit. That's crazy. Look, I'm glad we got in on it when we did James. Yeah. And I think there is something to that, which I told you of getting in on the ground floor of a platform that's going to explode. Right. So, you know, there are a couple people that are just going to be grandfathered in when Netflix really gets into the game when you know these these other platforms Hulu whatever starts really getting into the podcast game sure there's going to be a couple people that you can't fuck with there right? is but the problem is but if you get in after that good luck yes but the, the problem is this though much like terrestrial radio where you had you know people bitching about Howard Stern and everything back in the day mm-hmm. The, the mob mentality has now been bled over into podcasts, including yours. Your favorite, My favorite. And go-to of, of all time. Yeah. A lot of people. So, so everyone. It's sword and scale. Sword and scale. So it's anyone that is into true crime podcasts, that is the number one. So everyone that messages me like, hey, do you know of any other crime podcasts besides sword and scale? It's always like besides sword and scale. Sure. Obviously, that's the number one. Or My Favorite Murder. My favorite murder is a little bit more of a comedy podcast than it is a murder podcast. So they do eventually, towards the end, talk about a murder. Okay. But it's in a really, really comedy-based way. So they can't go too in-depth because you're, making, you're laughing about it. Sure, sure. So in the only way that you can really, really get into the facts and listen to the 911 tapes and everything is if it's a serious podcast. Okay. So... My favorite murder is on the charts because it's true crime, mm. but it's not exactly a true crime podcast. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, but um, it is the best. No question, hands down, and anyone that listens to true crime podcasts know this. The problem is 
they are on a platform, Wondery or okay. whatever, or they're on a, they're with a, is that a media company or? Yes. Okay. So Wondery is like Earwolf, Earwolf or Gimlet or any of PJ these. media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and you'll, you'll see on the podcast underneath it's everyone. Most of them are with some kind of media company. Sure. Um, and just like with anything, TV, life, celebrities, celebrities, uh, even just your corporate job, office job, if you aren't writing your own ticket in every way, someone can take it away from you. And that's the lesson of this sword and scale thing is that if you are having to answer to anyone, to anyone, yeah. For your livelihood. Anyone in jail, like anyone. We're anyone. talking anyone, yeah. Anyone. Yeah. It can be taken away from you. Even advertisers. If you're right. Yeah, so I, I, I look, I read the story over the weekend and, you know, they, they said that, that he was misogynistic or whatever. It, it was over a retweet that happened about International Women's Day. It was an Instagram post. Yeah, but was... For some, it was somebody else's originally or something, right? I don't think it was an original. He said, "No, he didn't. He didn't say it." Right? Somebody else did, and then he reposted this. He reposted this quotes yes, or whatever it this was. Quote, which it was about women. You know, why are we celebrating these little cunts? I think on International Women's Day. Do you want to know what it is? Tell me. Okay, it's pretty bad, but in the context of a true crime. He's a little bit tongue in cheek, but he doesn't take it super, super seriously. But anyway, so the post said, I don't understand dumb cunts. Uh -huh. Maybe I should take one apart and try and figure it out. Okay. Now that's very serial killer. That's very, I'm sure like Ed Gein uh, has said that. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of. I don't of... understand women. Let me fucking cut one up to figure it out. That's the way that they think. And that's what he gets or, into all the time. Or it's but. a sexual joke of let me take one apart and get in there and figure it out. Either Whatever way. Whatever you think. Sure. Right. right. Sure. It, it could be taken however you want. I think want. the, uh, the and dumb so that's, cunt that, line is what got him really in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but to me personally, like that is not enough to lose your sponsors or your sponsorship or your program over an Instagram post. Like I... D d d like we've posted worse way worse on drinking bros yes for mother's day last year right we posted a picture of Can casey anthony yes and we said happy mother's day everyone right the if i if i was here. with a media company i'm sure they would have raged um i'm not so it doesn't really matter we own we own all of our our own content and that's the difference it's really the only way i mean even youtube it seems can take down your stuff and I don't they know. They can. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and so, so and like to, to that point, um on Father's Day, we po I posted a picture of Woody Allen and his his Chinese wife and said happy Father's Day cuz it's Sure. Obviously he married his stepdaughter. Great. Um Great. probably would have gotten pulled down for some shit like that. Yeah. If I was with a media company. Yeah. But I'm not, so I don't really care. Uh post a lot of OJ Simpson things as well. Lesson here is own your own content and move on. What I don't understand and, and and like he came out and made a whole seven minute thing on his uh, on his feed saying Pretty hey transparent the, sh the show is canceled it's yeah. because of this mob mentality that's going on and it's because of these two people he named the two people the the other podcasts that are with wondery that called them up and said we need this guy dropped boycotted, led, yeah. led boycotts all yeah. of this and one of the people that was against him we just watched this case against Adnan, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the ladies was the big attorney, Indian attorney. Ah, she has. She's had a show. She's been capitalizing on this Adnan thing for. Oh yeah, ever it's big money, big money. Yeah. So she's got. You know they have leverage, and this this show Lore, which just got turned into a TV show, so they have leverage, right? In saying, hey, we're gonna either we're gonna leave or whatever. If you don't drop this guy. Well, I try to figure it out looking at his, his back catalog and his numbers and shit. Now that I know pretty much all of the ins and outs of the podcast world, mm -hmm. I think because he doesn't do very many shows, uh, 
the, the media company looks at it as like, this is a low risk for us by dropping us because your advertisers and your, your advertising rates are based on the number of shows you do. That's what you're charging on, right? So it's not downloads of each show because it, it, it's that, that it's that as well. But, but again, his shows are so few and far between, you know, when I, when I looked him up, I believe he's been on for six years and he's only an episode like 133 of sword and scale. I know you said he's got a couple of others, but sword and scale is a big one. I mean, that's like top it's a 30 big one, but each show, like I told you is like a incredibly detailed audio Correct. documentary. And it so much goes into it. Music wise editors, tapes, like yes. trying to find all these you know, little snippets from reports and all of this, like it's crazy what goes into so it. So the problem with that is, is this from a production standpoint, let's say you are getting a lot of money for that one, your, you know, your once a month show or sure. once, or once a week, once a week, once a yeah. week. Okay. Yeah. Let's say you are getting a lot of money from that, right? All of that money that you're getting has got to be sunk into those editors, uh, producers, all of that shit. Cause you're right. It is incredibly detailed. His, his episodes are like a mini movie. And they're great. So I, I understand it, it yeah. is. I understand the hype of, of all of it. Um, but th- that guy probably isn't making that much cash simply because it's got to be sunk into the rest of those people. You got to pay a staff, you know. Yep. And we looked at the numbers of what the staff is getting. It's not. It's not a lot. But you know, it's it's about thirty to thirty five grand a year. Yeah, I, I but think if we you're saw, paying a couple different if you're people, paying about four much, people, yeah, it's one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Like, man, that's a lot. Um, you know, all of that money's got to be spread up, and, and and you know, I can tell you for goddamn sure that media company Wondery is taking thirty percent. You know? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've been under. You know, we were under a deal like that with Drinking Bros after it blew up mm-hmm. the first year, and. We got some good advertisers out of it, so I'm not going to bitch completely, um, but they were taking 30, 35% of that, and I was just like, eh. And they also were advertisers that could say, I don't like the show, I'm dropping you. Yes, and that's happened to us before. Right. So when I, you find- I've had a couple advertisers, not very many, but a couple who said, hey, Ross, we don't like the way you're reading this shit. Get the fuck off. Or what you say on your show, or whatever they yeah. want to say, yeah. like whatever their brand stands for, but- the difference between Wondery, I guess, now and Drinking Bros and what you guys do is you find your sponsors based on what your show is. So they, they either find you, you find them, but it's, it ha- it's a marriage of you, you got to like what we're doing because right. this is what we're going to do and we're going to be in control yeah. of everything. And it's the only way for any of this stuff to work anymore and very quickly it's going to be i mean everyone's going to have to toe the line if they want to keep their money um it's yeah, just going to turn into tv yeah well podcast will then turn into tv and everything if you look on the charts every one is with a big media company media company yeah. there's very very few that are doing it all themselves and can do whatever sure. the fuck they want and be careful of that when you guys are looking for truth and you're looking for the real deal look at underneath it'll tell you if it's the name of the podcast right under it right they're doing whatever the fuck they want to do if if they're not then they're they're bowing to a media company down to somebody they're saying what they need to say they're answering to somebody which is fine it's totally fine and most of those fluffy ones yeah it's fine and you know speaking about bleeding over into tv the the next one up was is Tucker Carlson. Um, look, Tucker Carlson is under fire for some remarks in the cunt world. Same, 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 literally the same exact. Did he say cunt? Yeah, uh, on a radio show back in I don't know 2011. Uh, I never understood why you. Ha- I never understand why you have to say that word, but why hey. you have to say it or why you just what. It doesn't roll off the tongue for me and it doesn't feel like, I don't know. Like it's not a word that like I would, I would have to go out of my way and it feels uncomfortable. Not because I'm offending people. I just don't, it's not a, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 to me, I like, look, everybody's been saying it for years. I really don't care. I don't care either. It's just just a variation of the word. It's a variation of the word dick to me where look, I can go into extensive detail 
about the the numerous names I have for my dick. Sure. Um, so when when I look at the word cunt, old, old CP CP three it's the three PO. Yeah, exactly. When I look at the word cunt, it's just another variation for vagina to me. I don't I don't care. What, what's it? What does that mean to me or anyone else? Words yeah, again, are words. I'm not I'm not offended by it. I just don't like the word itself and how it sounds in like a sentence where it's like those oh, cunts. You're like didn't roll it didn't have a sing song to me eh. i don't like the way it rolls off i the enjoy tongue, that that's word that's all i enjoy that word i don't oh, mind do it. you okay yeah i don't cool. mind it i don't mind it at all um and a lot of a lot of like europeans it's big yes well it's so i it's, eh, it's I, I just i hear it all the time there, yeah. where it's just like all right cool I, I've, I've never been offended by it or, or anything else so what did he do he said look i'm not bowing to the mob mentality i'm not gonna fucking apologize for this shit now, does he have to? No, I don't think he does because he's Tucker Carlson. So he has no advertisers that are going to pull out. He I'm has sure no they do. A company that's going to. But let's face it, he's the biggest in the game right now. Uh, and that's and... very on brand for him. Exactly. They know what they're getting. One hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this came up in a lawsuit for me a while back. Somebody was like, you know, if this lawsuit got out, you'd be it'd be embarrassing. I was like, no, it would actually help. And I go. To, to make it even, to, to really put you where, where I'm at, where my fans are at, like, not only would it help if this got out, um, but if I get arrested on the way to the airport afterwards with, like, five pounds of weed in the car and I, was, and I was drunk, people would love it. They would love Be it. Be like, that's fucking Ross. Yeah. Yeah, dude. He's going to live forever. That's Hollywood, baby. That's showbiz, baby. And what a smart way to set up your life, huh? Is make I that thought your about brand. This. I've thought about this. So, like... Because you, you have to decide along the way of this, either the Hollywood path or whatever your personality is going to be in Hollywood or whatever, of who you, who you are and what you want to be and why. Right. And you, like a publicist sits you down pretty early on and you kind of discover it. Now, it, it, it will always change throughout your life, um, obviously because you're, you're a human and you know, there's things that are going to be important to you that weren't important to you when you were younger and things like that. But you sit down and you set up your life Kind of like that when you're navigating the Hollywood world where it's just like, hey, what are you going to talk about? What can you talk about? Whatever. Um, some people have beliefs and shit where it's just like, you know, either God or drinking or, you know, I've had guests on the show who are just like, I don't want to talk about drinking or drugs or this or that or whatever. I've gone through, um, you know, questions with agents before where it's just like, hey, man. What are we talking about today? Right. What are we going to do this? Or right, whatever. Right, right. It's not very often. Um, it, it has to be a big guess. Sure. But it has happened. Um, and with the publicist thing starting off, I, I remember sitting down with mine because uh, she's like, where do you want to meet? My very first publicist. She's huge. To this day, she's fucking huge. Um, and I said, let's meet, her, let's meet at this bar. And she was like, oh, you want to you you go to that bar? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So when we got there and I met her and I was sitting at the bar um, and she was just like, Oh, fuck. You you know, I had boots on and all this other shit. And she was like, so this is you. And I was like, yes, this is me. Like, Mm -hmm. I will sit and have a beer and chat with anybody, any time, any place on the planet. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. And that's me. And that's what I I want to be like. She was like, what do you want to talk about? Is there anything off limits? I said, there's nothing. There is literally nothing off limits. And whatever press we do going forward, and this was right after... Um, I got the new guy because it was m- mandatory at that point that I had a publicist. And I was like, I will talk about anything at all times, anytime, anywhere. And you can put that to the test of, of anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was like, all right, well, not a lot of people w- will do that. And I was like, I, I will because mm-hmm. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And then she asked me why. And, and I thought that was a very odd question. I was like, well, what do you mean why? It's my life and I'll just talk about whatever. And she was like, yeah, but it's also your brand. So whatever you're setting yourself up to be, there's got to be a reason behind it, you know? And I was like, well, no matter what happens along this journey, and I fucking hate that word, but I'll say it now. Whatever happens along this journey through my entertainment career, you really don't know what's going to happen. And case in point, fucking 20 years later, I still don't know what's going to happen every goddamn day. Mm-hmm. And it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But with that and with the journey and everything, the way I set myself up is I always want to be a guy that would just talk about whatever and have a beer with somebody. Like, I, I don't really give a shit. And if I do that and I establish that from day one, no matter what happens, I feel like I can kind of get away with murder 
yeah. all the time because I I will have always been true to brand or yeah. on form with everything. And, yeah. and I go, also, it doesn't affect my life. I don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not all the time where you and I both know people like that, where it's just like their public image is one thing. And then behind the scenes, you're like, Jesus Christ, you're a horrible human being. Right. Like, you know, right. Um, or, you know, the opposite of that with comedians in particular mm-hmm. is, you meet all these comedians, 99% of the time, they're the most unfunniest, boring people you would ever want to hang out with. And I was Just like, depressed. Yes. Like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm not. So, yeah, this is who I am. So, with Tucker Carlson, I, like, because it was so long ago and because I've seen his show and, yeah. you know, you know who that is, this is completely on brand for him. Like, th- well, I just love that idea. Be, but it's hard. Able- it's hard to get backing from a massive network that says, hey, man, we're going to support you behind this because right now, like you take the sword and scale thing. That's a pot. That is, that's a podcast. And it, granted it is big, but it is not as big as Tucker Carlson. Right. For virtually saying the same type of language and same type mm-hmm. of shit. One got fired. The other did not. And it, it's kind of amazing. Now, I don't know if it's because with sword and scale, I only know the guy from Sword and Scale. I don't know him in real life. I, I immediately right. went to all of his social media afterwards right. and said, who is Mike Boudet? Mm-hmm. Who is this guy and what is he about? And the, the oddest thing for me that I found about him is this guy has a top 30 podcast in the world. In the world. I can tell you on Drinking Bros side, like we're top 40 in comedy and we have about you know 4 million listeners 4.1 somewhere mm-hmm. in there right mm-hmm. this guy's got to have at least 5 to 7 mm-hmm. uh, million listeners his social media is non-existent and he has facebook pages but it's like oh hey he's got like 1500 likes or fans or whatever and i'm like yeah no one knows who this guy is they only know sword and scale right so Maybe that was part of it. Like, all right, Tucker Carlson is Tucker Carlson. It's the Tucker Carlson show. It's not called, you know, behind the shield or you know, something else. Like right. it's him. It's his brand. Hannity's the same way, you know, fucking Rachel Maddow is the same way where it's like, all right, maybe that was the, uh, an element of it of like, you know, fuck this guy. And it's, I think the other element is, um, he's, it's fairly controversial to talk about, the cases that he talks about in the way that he talks about it. He's very smart and, you know, his monologues and stuff are amazing, but he, the way that he views it sometimes can be, I've, I've heard him have to make a couple apologies yes. before the show starts about how he handled a previous case and how he kind of, you know, made a little bit light of, of one of some of the stuff. Right. Um, so I don't know if it's a, a, you know, leading up to something leading up to this. Gotcha. But um, I, but I view all of this, like, like the sword and scale, right? I, I view it as entertainment. It is your choice whether or not you believe absolutely. it, go along with it, all the shit. Same with Alex Jones, in my opinion. Yes. The, the thing that I don't agree with Alex Jones on, I mean, obviously the Sandy Hook thing is fucking ridiculous. Um, he has since changed his stance and said that I was incorrect and I believe it happened and everything else. Right. You cannot send people to people's houses. I, look, I would love to do that. Right. I would love to send motherfuckers to people's houses. That would be great. But right. I know that I can't do that. Mm-hmm. that, that those two things we disagree on. What, what I do agree with, with Alex Jones on and the guy from sword and scale is you're creating an enter- entertainment. It is your choice as a person, whether or not to, to believe it or go along with it or, do whatever you want with that information. Same with film, same with Facebook, same with Twitter or social media every day. It is your choice as a human to say, all right, I believe in this, or I think this is entertainment, or I, I you know, uh, video games in particular. I like, what's the justification then of, of letting your kid play a first person shooter video game uh, at eight years old? Remember Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. Like- Fucking stealing. driving over people, stealing shit or whatever. Stealing like Stealing whores, killing them. What is the difference between that and... Somebody like Alex Jones, what's like, how do you determine what's worse for you or what's, you know, all of it is, is a form of entertainment across the board. It is your choice as a parent to let your kids do whatever they're going to do. It is your choice as an adult to listen to what you're, you you want to listen to or watch pulling these people off the air, doing this other shit. 
I don't get. Now, Alex Jones owns his own shit. So Apple, Facebook, all that stuff got together and, and made the choice to pull Alex Jones. That wasn't a sword and scale situation. Well, that's the last, that's the last part of it, right? Where, yeah, own all your own stuff, but you can never own Apple. You can never own no. Spotify so, or YouTube. So you <laughs> have know. to have a place. You can just do it in your garage by yourself to nobody if you want. Yeah. Right? So there, there is a le- there's that last tier of, of uh, censorship yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. will happen. But I think Mike Boudet said something that pretty much sums it up, which is it's not enough for them to just unsubscribe, not listen. This offends me. I don't like it anymore. They're going to decide... It's not just enough to decide for themselves what they don't like. They need to decide for everyone else. So right. that was, that's the main problem with all of that is like nobody is just deciding for themselves. Hey, I'm offended by this. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to unsubscribe. I'm going to not watch the channel. I'm going to not buy this music. I'm going to not whatever. What it turns into is I don't like it. Now I'm going to make sure nobody else can hear it either. And they're in. Yeah. Uh, that that's the part that scares me the most out of all of this. Cause that's what we do. Somebody could come along and, and pull drinking bros. Somebody can pull like it's, dude. It happened with when darkness falls, he doesn't catch it. Yeah. When an Amazon pulls a book, right. And then you look in, inside the numbers that 90% of book sales come from Amazon. It's scary as shit when you're an author and you're like, Oh yeah, fuck. Because you go the next step down from that is just selling it on the street corner. I own all my stuff. Yeah, I write yeah. all my own stuff, but I still need one other thing. And yeah. So and luckily Barnes and Noble, the, you know, for now. didn't care. And for was now. just like, fuck. Actually, every other bookstore on the planet didn't care. Um, but Amazon's ex- the biggest. But Amazon's the biggest. Apple's and the biggest. Apple's the, you're right. So it's like these, if these YouTube, if these things. 88% of our listeners come from iTunes for this podcast. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy statistic to know that, hey, man, you could get pulled, and then what? And then what do you do? Because right now, Alex Jones is on a website, and that's just, you can't open up a website at the gym or, you know, plug that into your car and, you know, I guess listen I to that like audio. To like, it either. But, um, strange. I, look, look, the first time I listened to Alex Jones was when he when was on Rogan. That was it. Because I, I, don't, I don't have time to go to a fucking website or pull it Did up or whatever. Did he get crazier, you think? Yeah. This has made him crazier. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got, look, he's got a lot going on in his goddamn life. Yeah, I think he the, definitely... What's the, the Sandy Hook families are suing him for, what, $100 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, The Joe Rogan thing felt like a little bit of a um, lawsuit tour. He was trying to say all the things he needed to say on there, and he needed right, to get right, it out. Right, yeah, I right. think he called Joe and was like, hey, I'm getting sued. I need to be able to speak out on your show. Can I do this? So, so everything he was saying on that show was very much um, trying to save his own ass. But I, it's not at this point, though, you know, knowing lawsuits and all that shit, it's going to do what it's going to do. And there's there's nothing you can really do about it at that point. Um, yeah. What he had, he's going through a divorce. Uh, and then then all of your. Network might has be been on the pulled. Death list for yeah, this, for this year, all of your network is pulled and all that other shit. You might be on the death list. And if if you're a paranoid guy to begin with already, try putting Facebook, Apple, and Twitter into the for mix. Real against you. For Not real against you. you. So everything you thought conspiracy wise then was ripped away, and you're like, oh shit, my life isn't a conspiracy. This is crazy. Um, right. I was right. I was right all along. <laughs> I was right all along. The point is, I don't get mad about stuff until it affects me. And this sword and scale thing affects me. Yeah. I, you were really pissed off about it. And I, I don't came, see. I came, I busted into the room. Yeah. Huh? If, if. So could you hear this? Yeah. It, it, it takes a lot for you to get angry about shit. Me. To get fired up. It doesn't take that much to get fired no, up. No, it really doesn't. But for, for me, you. And, and even now, I'm, it's been a day. I'm over it. But that I day. I don't think you are. No, I mean. When I go next week, when the, the episode's supposed to come out, that's when it'll, I'll really feel it. That's when you'll, yeah, yeah, you'll miss it. Because it did do, it, they did do one last episode, which is kind of, I don't know. And it says from Wondery, so I'm a okay. little confused with that. But yeah, um, he has his own media company and he'll figure it out. I, I think part of it, him doing I'd, this. Uh, I'd love to buy that fucking show. I, hey, man, you can come on 
drinking bros and fucking say whatever you want all goddamn down t- ross patterson revolution he really, all of it. listen to one of his shows he really would be perfect on drinking bros. sure he, sure he would he talks and thinks just like you guys fuck the fucking system like he yeah. really does whatever the fuck he wants to right. and he's gotten away with it for a long time so good. good for him good on him uh he went I, a little what, bit too far i guess but i don't think so i, well, I look, don't think so either, I, want but I'm mo- saying. I, I think we need more of it otherwise then what would, would we it's like the show we talked about last week with with the comedians and, and the death of comedy and what are you what are you supposed to say anymore or do or you know fuck i can't fuck even that. listen about i can't even listen to people getting you know disemboweled and 911 calls yeah. about i can't how are you gonna get how to sleep how am i gonna sleep <laughs> at night and that's what you're taking away from me wondery yeah sword and scale was uh jesse's jam that was your fave oh that was your fave for the audience if you like sword and scale you are a twisted motherfucker that shit is sick it's awesome it'd be be like if they took college if they took college football away from if they took ohio state football away from me that's what losing sword and scale means to jesse sure like if every saturday in the fall i, I woke up and there wasn't ohio state football on I'd f- oh my god fucking... you'd be on the de- you'd be on the death list i'd be on the death list you'd be on the death list yes. for the year yes yeah. so bring it back uh, hopefully someone will bring it back maybe we can try to get him on the show uh I'm, we're look we're heading out to uh los angeles um heading out to, to san antonio for a while i mean and he's in florida but i'm sure he would come out all uh, somebody hit me up with his number uh we'll give him a call for sure yeah. I'll, I'll, let's try to make that go down um i mean i would have to be there obviously yeah 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 booty of, of, of course of course what, what up? Yeah. right like yeah. i knew him out of florida i i find it hilarious that your favorite oh, crime show perfect. the guy's out of florida is there anywhere else you would want to be no I wouldn't even trust anyone. Oh, else. you'd be in the belly of the beast. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even trust anyone else to give me a true crime podcast. If you're in LA. Nope. If you're in New York. Nope. Shut not buying up, it. Dude. Not buying I'm it. I'm not buying it. You need to be in Florida, a Florida man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's a real <laughs> Florida man. He didn't move his operate. I mean, he is from there. He lives it. He breathes it. Yeah. And he gets it. It's nice. That's nice. Uh, so are sponsors. We got to get to the sponsors, Shaves. You and I just keep talking like two little tiny monkeys in a tree. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, BlackRifleCoffee.com. Heading to BRCC in the morning, actually. Flight out to San Antoine. The Chuan. We need to talk about these planes. I think I'm getting on one of them. I'll be there for a week. Are oh, these planes that keep blowing up? <laughs> I think they grounded them, didn't they? Not in uh, not in the U.S., so uh, I should be no. uh, boarding one of those. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, carry on. I, I don't know what mine are. Honestly. Nobody knows. No. I'm, I have stupid, no idea. They talk I don't to even some check lady. it. I don't, you know. They talk to some lady in the airport. From now on, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to maybe not, you know, I'm going to check which kind of plane it is, and maybe I'll take another one. No, you, you think won't. so? No, you, you won't. You think you're going to orbits? <laughs> yeah. Can I please see what kind of plane it is? Is that a jumbo jet? No, oh, I won't do it. I okay, won't take well, any here's the new price. 767s. Let me get on that plane that might blow up, actually, <laughs> now that you've given me the other price, because they're just like, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. People uh, are calling up wanting refunds. Sure. Sure. Sure, Idiot. Yeah. yeah. Not okay, a prayer. Not a prayer. Go is that going to affect anything? Nah. Uh, BlackRifleCoffee.com, bringing you the finest coffee in the lands. Made from the, the hands of veterans. <laughs> Bagged up, shipped out straight to you. They got uh, beans. Beans, 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 beans. Are you going to... Now, are you going to have a meeting with them about, about that, that song? song yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, we're, and we're good, working good, with good. Um, uh, NKOTB for... You know, maybe oh, recording wow. it. New, yeah, we're working with new kids on maybe recording the Bean song. I would kind of love it to just be Donnie. <laughs> just <laughs> why, why not? solo. Why not? You know, just a solo. With Jenny McCarthy's frozen face in the background. Uh-huh. <sighs> he goes, jealous, guys? Yep. <laughs> I got her. Yeah. You want her? I got her. I got Find her. me. Look at this. <laughs> Look at what I got, guys. Yeah, yeah. Donnie, you really are killing it, buddy. Be a Donnie in this world. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com and, and kill it. Own it. Sh- share your love of Black Rifle. Uh, yeah. Sign up for the Coffee Club of the Month program. 
It's the best in the biz. It gets delivered to your house, same date of every month. Use the promo code REVOLUTION at BlackRifleCoffee.com. You get so much more than coffee off. with that you do. subscription you too, do. right? Uh, next up, we've got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Uh, Strike Force Energy, premier energy drink in the biz. Four magazine flavors. Lemon, original. I was there. I was close enough. Mavising? Mavising. They're maves. I'm a mavising. Amazing. Amazing. Grace. Make America <laughs> great again. With StrikeForceEnergy.com, they get a 10-pack, a 40-pack, and a 750-milliliter bottle. This, this little guy, bing, bing. Uh, rest on your bar top or countertop and you can just pop a couple squirts in and go. You can kick the can. It's over. No carbs, no sugars. Uh, we're heading into spring now. We, sp- we sprung forward with the clock. Can you believe it? Yeah. You're going to be up later. It means parties. Those afternoon parties are going to go a little later. Might as well throw a little strike force in that drink. Keep you going throughout the day. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use the promo code revolution for 20% off. They also have a subscription of the month, which is nice. And they ship everywhere in the entire world. Uh, next up. Oof. Oh, I've been waiting for this one. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Let me count the ways that I love them. They're sending the, we, we ordered the new sheets. Oh, yes. Um, super stoked about this. Mm, they will be here pillows, when we get back. Right? Some more pillows. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, these are like the, I, from what everybody says, they're like the nicest sheets on the planet. So I'm sure if they're from Ghost Bed, I mean, from t shirts, sheets. Yeah. But I don't know anything they don't, that's not totally comfortable. Or just fucking amazing. So yeah. big fan of them. And uh, they, they will be here when we get back. I'm it's so excited. Too, you guys, it's just easy. If you need a mattress, like I promise you going to a mattress store, Su- it sucks picking it out, getting it delivered by those guys or whatever, getting it up the stairway or whatever. I promise you, this is just click it. It, it comes, comes in a fucking box. It comes in a box. Up, pulled up the if stairs. If you have one other yes. person that's not even that strong, yeah, yeah, just literally one other person, you can get it to whatever room you need. Fold it out there. So yeah, you I'm open very up in much, the room. let's make things easier. Same. Always, always. Same. If I can just click it and it can come to my door. That's and why I, like, we talk about Black Rifle Coffee. We talk about Strike Force and like Straight Razors and, and these guys where it's just like, dude, it just gets shipped to my fucking house. I don't like have to do anything. It's like a lemonade thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That I don't want to go to... Costco or whatever. I don't want to go to a mattress store for this stupid shit. You don't want to go to Rite Aid or CVS to pick up your shampoo, your no. conditioner. I mean, yeah. come on. Let's- so look, if you're, uh, if you're thinking about getting a mattress, 36 months, zero interest. You can pay as you go there. Also, if you're, you're military or first responder, um, current or former, doesn't really matter. You get an extra 15% off because the deals they already have on their fucking site at ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros are already amazing. Now you get to take another 15% off a uh, big fan of ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And that's where you're going to find all the exclusive deals. Next up, we got straight razors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right, kids? Yo, yo, that was right in my, my gullet. You right, kids? Yeah, it was right there, right in my goal. Oh, 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 right, my goal. Oh, jeez. Oh, do you? Rock it. Oh, God. You know you like would have been lady? dropped. You would have been dropped from Sword and Scale. Absolutely. Show no, me and Boudet, two. me and Boudet would just be racist, <laughs> misogynist together. I don't like women either, you know, to be honest. So, and I get it. Just me and him just doing a murder show together, man. Dream. <laughs> You'd leave this show in a second. You'd Absolutely. Like, if Boudet gone. came a calling. Yeah. Yep. Bye. <laughs> I so- James and murder. Forget it, dude. That is your dream. He, bu- he always puts up, you know, the on zip recruiter. He always puts up looking for producer, looking for editor. I'm like, well, producer, let's 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 back up there. And then I go, I write him back always, and I go, but ha- do you have to Google? And he goes, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't respond because that's 
That's crazy, right? Yeah. He just sort of deletes my... Do you have to do anything on a computer ever? Quick question, <laughs> MB. <laughs> now, when you say producer, uh, you mean just sitting there and talking, right? <laughs> it's me on the phone with him. Hello? Are you there? Yep. yep. Uh, hello? I think we got cut Imagine off. Imagine the fucking research you have to do for that show, too. Oh, uh, you'd be the worst at it. Oh, I would love it. You'd be the worst at it. I would be going it. through 911 calls, getting little snippets. Yeah. Going yeah. through newspaper on the on the microfiche, what's it called? Yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> microfiche. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Big microfiche fan. I can I you've always been a big microfiche fan. Oh my gosh, I You I want you you cuz you say to me all the time you're like, "Hey, what are you what are you looking at on your phone over there?" I'm just like, oh, "I'm reading news stories for tomorrow's show." And you're like, "Ah, Shouldn't you be using a microfiche? Well, and you go, what are you doing? And I'm in the corner with the big. Yep. Rolling it down. And I'm like, me oh, too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. A bright light just b- bashing Whoever your face. Whoever finds the answer first wins. <laughs> That's me. Oh, huge microfiche. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that what it's called? Fiche. Yeah. Big fiche fan. No way to find out. Nope. Again, Mike. Hit. Now, I do not own a computer. If I leave this show, I will not have anything. Is that good enough for you, Mike? (laughs) You should hit up, um, have the listeners hit up Mike Boudet and just say hire Jesse. Hashtag hire Jesse. (laughs) Can't Google. Nope. You're really great at listening to the show, though. So, like, maybe he needs that. Yes, yes, yes. And I could maybe do a little bit of a, a proof. Yeah. It's soft proof. And I will get to it eventually. It may, it will not be on time. No. And I wonder no, no, if no. that might be an issue for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be about 48 hours so late. So again, cannot Google, may be able to proof listen, yeah. will not hit the deadline. No, nowhere near it. Uh, what you, what you think? Yeah, see, we'll see what they think. Now, is this still straight razors? It is. We're, okay. It is. You know who can hit the deadlines is straightrazors.com. Always. When always, you order it, always, it gets always. delivered to your house and it's the finest. A shaving product in the land. I man, I feel sprightly today, like a leprechaun. I think it's we're getting so close to St. Patrick's Day. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> your fave. Your For all fave. of your shaving needs, go to straightrazors.com. Best in the biz. They've been with us since day one. We love straightrazors.com. Their aftershave is the best, man. The smolder. Uh, I love it. Uh, if you're worried about using a straight razor, they got safety razors. Go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And as always, when darkness falls, he doesn't catch it at night. She cries while he rides his steed. Are still available on all platforms, including Amazon. Hardback, paperback, ebook, and the audiobook. Um, God, everybody is starting to get on the audiobook train. They're like, holy shit, these are the funniest audiobooks of all time. Yes, they are. Uh, six and a half hours a piece. That way, if you love this show or Drinking Bros or whatever, you can just listen to this. It's all actors. It's all people you know. And you're just like, all right, sweet. It's it's disgusting, misogynistic, uh, racist. Everything across, like yes. anything you yes. could possibly yes. name is yes. in there. And Which is why uh, Amazon said, eh, eh, hang on one second. Hey, let's back the <laughs> hey, truck up. We're you, not know what, you know what's this. weird? They didn't have a problem with the audiobook putting that up. Amazon? Yeah. Wasn't that after the whole book debacle? It was, it though? was, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe, I don't, I, you're right, I, I might not have the answer on that. Uh, what I do have the answer on, though, is uh, my favorite Irishman, uh, McGregor, McGregor. What is up with that little live wire? I got fucking arrested again. Yeah. Again. Mm-hmm. I'm really surprised after the last one. I mean, he Are just you? finally cleared all those legal yeah. hurdles maybe two months ago. And now this. It is weird because he is so just calm. He smashed someone's phone to a million pieces Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because they were trying to take a picture of him or his family or something. We don't have the full story yet because this this just happens. We're just kind of. Listen, I guarantee you they were disrespecting him in some way. Probably. Okay. Probably. But. Yeah. Sure. Sure. You know what's funny? that uh, When I think about him going to jail. Like, he's the only white guy I know where it's just like... No problems. There'd be no issue. No. Nobody's going to say shit to Conor McGregor. I think they will put him separately, but yeah. He would fucking tear their That's faces why. off. That's <laughs> why. 
God damn it. They're not putting him separate to protect him. <laughs> Anybody. They're like, putting him separate to protect everyone else, else yeah, in the yeah. prison. <laughs> like, that's crazy, but it's probably true. Yeah. Because that's his thing, right? He'll start a fight with you. Anyone. Any size. It doesn't he, even he matter how you big you are. You may start about to start a fight with him, right? So he comes in swinging so that it doesn't happen to My him. My favorite about him is the, the Nate Diaz fight where somebody had canceled or backed out or somebody got hurt and, he, and, they, and, they, and they couldn't fight. And they were like, hey, we got this other guy at like 175, which is like 30 pounds heavier than him. He should never have taken that yeah. fight. And, and like two weeks notice, he was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go. And it was just like, hey, man. And he lost. But of course, it was it was one of the best fights. My what's one of my favorite personal MMA fights of all time. Mm-hmm. He lost. And then they were like, great. So you're probably never going to do that again. He's like, no, fuck it. Line up a rematch. Let's do it. And he. Then he beat the guy the next time out, and you're just like, Jesus just gave Christ! Him more time, I or just, whatever. I just love McGregor. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know what happened, uh, but his whole shit keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think he's got 120 million followers on like Instagram. I mean, it is. Jesus. I'm gonna double check that because it, it it's gotten to a point now where you're kind of to me he's eclipsed like an athlete at this point. Like he's. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much just one he's, of the most famous people in the world. I think he's sort of bigger than... The game. He's bigger than anything sports. Anything that he's actually doing. He's more like... I'm sorry. I was incorrect. I was way off on that. Thirty mil- He's got 30 million followers, which is a lot. Okay. Um, does anyone have 120? I think so. I think one of the Kardashians I'm does, sure. actually. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to say like Kim Kardashian probably does. Right. You're just like, oh, all right, cool. How many? Yeah, she has 130 million. Jesus. Uh, um, so M- McGregor's got 30 million, which is, look, that's one tenth of, U- of the U.S. population. So every time you post, it's just like, hey, cool. Here's, yeah. here's what's happening. I have a hard time with him getting arrested over this, w- what he's charged with. And that's why I bring this up, okay. which is this fucking part of its robbery of, you know, oh, and it's the phone and they slapped a bunch the of the reason dumb why charges. is because it, a phone, it, like if, if it's, you know, it, it's considered a felony if it's over like, I don't know, $750 or $1,000 or whatever it is. The problem with a phone is these fucking things are so expensive. Yeah. I don't really give a shit if you smash a phone. I honestly don't. Uh, give them a fine, make them pay for the fucking phone, mm-hmm. but then move on with your life at if that point. If he has insurance on it, we'll just get another one. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if he doesn't, great. Pay, pay for that. Whatever. Give me, yeah. And move on with your life. The fact that you've got to waste taxpayers' money on this stupid shit over a phone and felony charges and court, court fees and all this other stuff like over a smash cell phone, get the fuck on with your life at this point. Right. I don't care about that. He just has a, There's a little bit of a pattern, I think, they want to... There is, but when you're that famous, like, I've been around people that are that famous. Mm-hmm. There's pe- I mean, there's people that just lose their fucking mind around you, and for sure, they're jamming things in your face, your face, or your families, where you're just like, "Hey, he's got two young kids." I- I'm not saying that that was the case because I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, this this just came out, but right. Once you have small kids around, or you know, family and all that other shit, or if people are being super invasive, like, mm-hmm. "Hey, man, you know, can we just have one judge who just..." gonna sit down and be like look this guy was an asshole maybe you were an asshole back let's just buy him a new phone let's move on with our fucking life like you know you would hope but that's not gonna happen you would i think hope. his bail was like one million seven no it was like 7500 which for a smash cell phone pretty excessive they're man. just uh yeah so they're profiling him I mean, I'm not saying they're profiling him, but that's just, ex- come on, what are we doing, dude? If it was anybody else. What are we else doing? And you're going to jail phone. and getting booked and all that shit. What are we doing anymore? Um, mm-hmm. uh, find him and get, move on with your day. This stupid shit. I'm tired of hearing about it. I, I know Chris Brown, um, the same thing. He smashed somebody's cell phone once and went through felony charges and whatever. It's like, come on. It's a fucking cell phone. Like, pay for it and let's move on with our, our lives here at this point. Right. Just drunk, a, drunk girls do the same thing to their phones every night. Every night. All over the Waste world. Waste of time. Waste so. of fucking time. Um, I, fuck, I remember dropping a... I, I dropped a cell phone. And you... I, I will say this. You do have to go through it with the insurance. 
thing on that. Yeah. I always have insurance on it or whatever. And um, I, I dropped my cell phone, fell out of my pocket through a grate, a sewer grate um, in L.A., which is, look, let's face it. There's no rain ever in L.A. Mm-hmm. So it's dry. It was right. dry down there. I could see it. Mm-hmm. I could hear it ringing. It was outside of my house. The, the sewer grate was outside of my mm-hmm. house. So I'd have to listen to my phone ring all day until it died. That's awesome. And I, I was like, hey, I, 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 you got to replace this phone. I can't get it. And they were like, well, what happened to it? You know, we, we see where it's at. And it appears to be at your house. And I right. was like, well, it is. I know. It's in a sewer. You I had idiot. to send a photo. And I was like, look, if you want to bring somebody out here to get down into the sewer. But I, I would have had to have called the city. And the city would have to, to get involved in, in this thing. Uh, you couldn't pull the grade up on your own, you know? Sure, no. Like a bunch of people or mm-hmm. uh, the way they had it built into the ground. It, it oh, wasn't okay. removable. So it was like just manhole like manhole type. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Like you, you had to call the city at that point. They're jackhammering like, and shit. Yeah, your- yeah. And I'm like, from my phone, I don't really care. And I told yeah. them this on the, on the phone, you know, uh, somebody else's obviously. I was just like, hey, guys, it was Apple. It's like, I pay the insurance. You just send me the fucking phone. Right. Um, it took a couple of days worth of fighting, but they did send me the phone. And like, to, I, I don't know. The next rain swept the, the phone away. Or somebody got it. But at that point, I was like, who gives a shit? Like, just send me a new phone. I don't, ca- I don't care. You know, move right. on with your life. Same right. with this. Move on with your fucking life. Uh, now, what I do love and I, I am all here for is uh, there's a coffee company. It's not Black Rifle Coffee, but I wish it was. Hmm. Um, there's a there's a town called American Canyon in okay. California. Okay, twenty thousand. They're trying to shut down this coffee shop up there called Bottoms Up Espresso. You want to take a wager what what they're doing there? Bottoms up. It's basically strippers selling coffee. Oh, yeah, like they're dressed like burlesque dancers. And uh, you can get a nice cup of joe there. I don't love a burlesque, but yeah. I'm down for a stripper. But you gotta, you gotta, what, you gotta clothe up a little bit. Sure. You gotta put something on. Yeah, but I don't like a swing dancing burlesque. I don't like that kind of bullshit, but I'm down for a straight up stripper. Yeah, for a stripper, right? Giving you coffee. So they're wearing bikinis sure. or like burlesque outfits. And uh, I look, their logo is amazing. Um Bottoms uh, up. Bottoms up. And it's just got a girl who's just kind of touching her hair. Like, that's the logo. Kind of uh-huh. touching her hair. Uh-huh. Uh, and she's only wearing, you know, a bikini. Uh-huh. Like a little bikini in the back. Sure. Um, really, really clever marketing ploy. You know? Right. Because strippers who can make coffee, I think you're teaching them a trade. A skill. And yeah, I don't, I don't know like why we look down apron, on that as a society. Like an apron That's where it exactly looks what like it is. nothing's yes. on underneath. Yes. Everybody loves that. Yeah. That little peekaboo <laughs> in the back, right? That's, That's what it is, James. That. And now we can't have that. Sure. People are bitching about it. Now, I'd be pissed if it was the only coffee shop, right? It's the only place to go, <laughs> covering the kids' eyes, things like this. But I'm sure there's another one there. That they can go to? Yeah. I, I, I don't, now, is it all, are the windows all open? I mean, what is the problem? Yeah, yeah the windows are open. It's not, so it, look, you're, you're, you're not caged by? up. They're just wearing bikinis, shapes. They're just wearing bikinis. So, yeah, I, I guess the Again, kid. I'm fine with it. The kid factor. Again, you don't have to bring your kid in there, right? No, you don't. Look, that's, that's what I'm saying. You don't have there's to bring your another, child in there. <laughs> Coffee shop in town, you know, 20,000 20, people is not a lot, right? Right. So if they're saying this is the only coffee shop in the little downtown. Yeah. Um, you know, then I, then I get it. But look, if that's just kids, one of yeah, the... Or kids used to it at this point. This, the, look, this point was brought up last night when Seth Rogen's trailer dropped, his new trailer for his new movie. Like, are kids... What are kids used to enough nowadays? What are... What is his... Uh, he's got a new movie called Good Boys coming out, and it's... It is a hard R, but it's about middle schoolers. They're 12. Look. The kids in yeah. the trailer have yeah. said that they can't even... They're not even allowed to watch the Red Band trailer. So the Red Band trailer dropped ra- last night. These kids who are 12 say the word fuck maybe 20 times in the trailer. Uh, they're holding anal beads, fighting each other with dildos that are their parents, things like that. 
And the point is that this is what middle school kids talk about, think about all of the shit. So I've heard, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, look, I, I watched it. Um, first, first of all, it's nice to see a comedy out in the world. Like just one no that is aggressive it is, yeah. at the some point. The kids don't have to see it. Calm down. They do not. <laughs> but then that it comes to the point of like, because there's a huge debate over who's going to see this movie now. Mm-hmm. You have a movie about 12-year-olds that 12-year-olds cannot see. It is, it's R. It's a hard R. Yeah. Uh, so it's just parents that are going to see this movie. Do you remember kids? I do. I do. And, and, and but that's kids the thing is like, see that movie. yeah, kids cannot see that movie. So how is it going to do? I wonder, um, this will oh be the gosh, first, I think it'll be interesting. This to will be the see, first test. Yeah. yeah because like, we'll, we'll, you make a movie for 18 and up, right? About 12 year olds who goes and sees it. Um, I thought the trailer was fucking hilarious. It's scary for a second when you have kids and you're like, oh my God, holy shit. There's no way I would want my it. kids of seeing it. Uh, but you're right. Like thinking back, I remember telling everyone to go fuck themselves in, in like fourth grade, like literally at a lunch table of like, a, a lot of people ask me like, Hey, were you always as fast as you always, you know, were you always this acerbic and all this shit? Y- yes, I was. And I can remember the moment it happened in like fourth grade where I was getting made fun of at a long lunch table. We all know those long tables that fold up in the middle, you know? Sure. It's benches on both sides. Yeah. Like 12, 14 kids. This kid was picking on me. Uh, he was calling me Bucky 2000. Said my, my teeth were so buck tooth that they were already in the year 2000 at that point, which was pretty good. For a fourth grader. You like that? Okay, cool. I, uh, yeah, for, for a fourth Meta, grader. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, that was that far in the future, you know? I was like, mm-hmm. ah, I didn't, like, I didn't mind it. Mm-hmm. And I remember just something snapping in me. And just, I went through, all because everybody laughed at the table. And I just went through one by one to all 14 of these kids and told them to go fuck them and what was wrong with them in every single facet of their life. Mm-hmm. And I probably said the word fuck 30, 40 times during this conversation. And I was in fourth grade. So when I went back and when I was watching the trailer, I was like, yeah, yeah, this is probably true. Shit. You don't want to admit, but it's probably, it's true. It's like, that's how kids talk. And that's what they think about. I think you, that will be part of it where you will start to remember your experience. Mm -hmm. It being a little bit different, maybe not as bad, but on the way. And then people with kids. So, this is a huge portion of the population that will be interested in seeing this movie, right? Yeah, I um, think so. None of which should be the actual kids, but they'll find a way. <laughs> yeah, they will, right? They'll find a way. If they found a way to get the anal beads, they'll find a way to watch this movie, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. you know. But it's called, it's, look, it's called Good Boys. Um, it's crazy, and it's fun. It reminds me of middle school. A middle school version of Superbad is probably the best description of it. Right. But it, I just... Buckle up. If you're watching the Red Band trailer, you're going to hear, like, it's a little jarring at first to hear 12 year old, because it's real 12 year old. It's not like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. they're 18 year olds right. cast as, as, you know, like, no, you can't it's not do the that Hollywood anymore. version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like when I was the new guy and I'm fucking 23 years old playing a high schooler. Like, right. No, this is 12 year olds playing 12 year olds. So when you see it and you hear it, you're like, oh, wow, wow. That's, they're, they're, that's, they're little kids that are definitely saying that. This is a good segue into Crime Corner. Yeah. We got a, we got a Crime Corner. Crime Corner. A real one, by the way. A real crime. A real crime corner, not, not one that real was crime corner. Listen. stolen by somebody else on Drinking Bros News. What Look, the fuck was that shit? I'm fine with it. You want to do a poor man's version of my thing? You can't, you can't That's top fine. the Jables. You can't beat Jesse you Wiseman. You can try. That's crazy. You can try. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? No good for you. It's cute. Ah, you know what I mean? It's Fuck cute. that, dude. Fuck that, you know? Fire away, Jabe. Do the of. best in the biz. Listen, now that's a lot of pressure. That's why I didn't. But anyways, it goes along with what you're saying. So a bus driver abandoned 30 kids at a gas station mm. in a bus. Where at? And flipped them off and told them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> and so I go, yeah. Where is that? Well, it was in Pennsylvania. Ah, all right. Yeah. Right? 
Not in Florida, I know. Yeah. You know, this kind of this kind of thing of uh, you know, the kids being little shits. Now these are high schoolers. Okay. So they're you know, we're not leaving little five year olds on the side of the road. We're leaving thirty little shit bags. I get it. Do you do you have his name? Let's present him as a hero. A woman. Yeah, her. Let's present Lorianne her. Lorianne Mancos. <laughs> I even like it. I even like it more that she's a woman. Right. That she was like, she was you know what? Like, Fuck you guys, dude. There's We're all ma- done here. Right. <laughs> We're all done here. We're all done here. We're all done here. Um, and the kids were just, oh, they're the ones like recounting the story. She was driving so fast and erratic. Because you were being little yeah. fucking shit. So they were talking shit about her driving. She was already agitated, you know? Yeah. You're 44. You're a school bus driver for high school kids. Sure. Jesus Christ. You know? Yeah. I, I, I just, I think more and more um, kids are just becoming pussies because of how they're raised and all this other shit. And I'm it, like this, if somebody would have done that, like for me growing up, here, I, like I'll, I'm going to switch bodies real quick. I'm going to sure. go ahead and vice versa, you know, Kirk Cameron myself into Dudley Moore's body real quick. Right. Um, a little Freaky Friday. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I would have laughed my ass off if I was a high school kid and my female bus driver pulled over the, the bus and said, fuck you guys, I'm out of here and just left. It would have been amazing. You and guys no, all have cell phones. Everyone, everyone yeah. can call their fucking mommy and daddy. Yeah. Why are you on a school bus anyways? Loser. Loser. Drive. If you're not fucking driving high school senior and I don't want to hear the, bus, the you're a loser. I don't want to hear the excuse of I'm poor. I don't have a car. Somebody does. And you can pile, everybody piles in everybody else's cars. No, That's what we did to the kids. They were like rich, white looking motherfuckers. That's why she told them to go fuck themselves. Well, another. Let me just add one little wrinkle thing. Go ahead. Because it, you are right. Now, she was drunk as shit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it had been a, a life yeah. leading up to this moment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had been a life of these shit. Sure. <laughs> no, I get it. I actually, I, I actually really get it. So DUI is yeah. really where Dewey. It, uh, Dewey and endangering <laughs> 26 counts of endangering children. And uh, she was actually made pull over by the kids because she was like swerving into traffic and stuff. Well, you, ah! pro- you, you probably should have led with that, James. Um... No, because they didn't. But, <laughs> you know. They put that at the bottom because the re- because what they wanted to let you know <laughs> is that you know this this lady yeah it had been years and it'd been years in the making I think sure 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 you know and driving these little pieces of shit around for however many years yeah can really take a toll no no especially if they're rich white bitches right hundred percent yeah so. Do you have a couple? You know, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mid afternoon. Look, because that what, what's that? What's that bus ride? What, what is that? Three, four o'clock? Around Probably two. around. F- no, it's not two. Kids don't get out of school at two. Oh, high school is three. Yeah, right. Four. I think you get out. Of, I, I I think I got out at three forty-five or four. Okay. Or somewhere in that region. Oh, God. So yeah, mm. yeah, you're right around. F- yeah, three forty-five, four. At yeah, that point. So- Having a couple, it, it, it I've four is okay. Had had a drink or two at three in one my of your, one day. One of your friends came over the other day at two and just popped open a bottle of wine. So yeah, yeah so you're good. Look, <laughs> you have a couple, and then you 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 know you pop back to work, whatever yeah. that work may be, right? Sure. Whatever your job is, drive, is it driving bus kids? I, I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, I'm not asking you the questions not when I'm having either. a drink with you. Yeah. At um, the local happy hour, which is earlier than normal happy hour at the dive bar. <laughs> they do theirs around three to five, just so you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, with the free wings and whatnot. So, again, I don't ask questions of what the job is that you have to go back to. And no, you just nor do you hope, need to, James. And, just, and you just hope that, you know, they, they stay in line that day when you decided yeah. to have a little fun. Find out. Find and, out. Uh, if not, you can always pull over and tell everybody to go fuck themselves. Yeah, that story kind of developed in a in an op, you know, in a backwards way. But it did. I just wanted, it did. <laughs> I wanted to get 
every reaction. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people would probably ask, is it a crime? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. And which cuz I have which done, the answer is yes. The answer is. is yes actually is, 26 yes. counts of endangering <laughs> child endangerment and a DUI. Uh so yes, but um before I said that, no, no crime. No. You know, no crime in telling kids to fuck off and leaving with the gas station with all their cell phones and their a, pretty a, much adults, you know, they're yeah. about to graduate. They're so accouchements. They need to figure out how to get home from a gas station. That's for damn sure. If you're a senior. Oh, yeah. And you can't somehow find a way home. No. From a nearby gas station. Then you've got bigger problems. Yeah, bigger issues. And she kind of exposed that. Bigger fish to fry. For them and their parents. Oh. Yeah. So. Gonna, I'm going to be honest, Javes. That might, that might have been one of my favorite crime corners you've ever done. <laughs> of all time. We've been doing this show for uh, over two years now. Uh, almost exactly two years at this point, by the way. Um, that's oh one gosh. of my favorite ones you've ever done. And, you know, that's, that's Shane Goodman. I hate to always give it to the same people, guys, you know, but again. If you want a promotion of the precinct. If you want a promotion, you, you send them. <laughs> send them with the frequency of Shane Goodman. Or yeah. Not. Or not. Yeah, but look, he's, uh, he's really boots on the ground. Uh, it's I mean, one of he's my favorites. Really pounding the pavement. It's one of my favorites. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give uh, Shane Goodman a promotion. You know, he may, he may be promoted. <laughs> da, da, da. I'm gonna put a, a good word in with the da, captain. Da, da, da. <laughs> That'll bring us to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right, Chaves. Uh, you got you got lost in your Google machine, and that happens. Gosh, I just looked down for one second, and yeah, all of it just disappeared. Your world disappeared. That's the problem. This one's going out to Blase Pascal. I love that it was gonna be the bus driver, and then you're all whoopsie. Oh, uh, okay, go ahead. Hang on. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Blase. Blase Pascal, um, an inventor. You know what he invented, Jabes? What? He launched the first bus service. Of all time in Paris. School bus? Yeah. Uh, look, uh, March bus? 18th, 1662. The bus service was called a carriage because it was a fucking carriage. And that's, mm-hmm. that's how it began. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was a horse-drawn omnibus service, which started uh, by a businessman. And then they just picked up people and dropped them off in town. Cool. Same thing. You're going to tell me that this fucking guy wasn't drinking, driving a carriage? You know he was. Had to have, right? You know he in was. In France? Isn't it mandatory to drink wine like when you wake up? Look. I think that's part of the country's policy. Yeah, definitely. At any age. At all ages. So for that woman. uh, Yeah. Know that even back in March of 1662. Come on. The French invented this. They were getting fucking housed driving these goddamn things around. Um, Look, it's human nature. Yes. To want to drink and drive. We only don't do it because of all these fucking it, it, yeah. DUIs that have come up, right? Yeah. Before that, yeah. it was really just part of who we were. Driving's boring. You want to have a few, you know? You just, Especially a long you drive. Where you you're drive, just like, all right, cool, yeah. And you drink. Yeah. Sometimes Hopefully they're the, going to. The, yeah. I mean, we're not advocating that. We're not promoting that, obviously. What we no, are we saying is this. we don't do it anymore and nobody should, but. What we are saying is this. Can, can we stop fucking with Elon Musk so he can finish his vision of, you know, driverless cars so we can all just. So we can just be done with this shit. Yeah. Just get fucked up and not have to worry about it. That's it. Yeah. That's all we want in this world. Yep. Um, and all I want in this world is for Jabes to continue these crime corners. Love him, Jabes. It was my favorite one you've ever done. Oh, thanks. It is. For Jesse Wiseman. AKA the Jables. I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.